Kenneth Copeland has done some wacky stuff when it comes to faith healing, but it just got wackier. I want to talk about some of his new strategies that he's covered recently, and then we're going to be talking about another pastor's strategy for teaching about Jesus, a guy named Michael Todd. We'll get to Michael Todd in a little bit and his the things that he did that were kind of questionable back in January. We'll get to that in a minute. For now, let's watch this Kenneth Copeland clip. He's sitting here talking to a guy named Greg Stevens, I think. Yeah. Guy's name is Greg Stevens. So he's sitting here talking to Greg Stevens. This is mid-April 2022. Listen to what Kenneth Copeland has to say here. I was in a, almost the same situation one time, another man's church. There was a man in the prayer line, <laughs> and the Lord said, you see that man right there? I said, yes. He said, I want you to hit him in the stomach just as hard as you can. <laughs> I said, I don't believe I want to do that. <laughs> well, he didn't take that. I'm not convinced that Kenneth Copeland wasn't looking for an excuse to hit somebody in the stomach at the moment. That's not good. Well, he didn't take that. Then the closer he got, the closer I got. And he said, I want you to hit him in the stomach as hard as you can. So when he got up there in front of me, I mean, I just unloaded on him. And man, it knocked him backwards and come on and he went, my God, he said, I'm healed. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? Emily Sigmund, honestly, I think these pastors get a little kick out of being so disrespectful to these people he's claiming to heal and pretending it's a good thing. Yeah, I think you're right. They probably do get a kick out of it. Like, they know that they can hit and abuse these people, and there's nothing that they're going to do about it. No one's going to do anything. They get to do this for free, free of consequences, because it's a religious observance or whatever you know it, it's really messed up stuff here's the thing about god and the bible and these faith healers and these pastors you know mega church pastors and stuff televangelists here's the thing about them there is nothing in the bible no moral stand that you can find that isn't reversed or contradicted somewhere in there Okay, for let me give you a good example the verse about you know hating people from the lgbt community that's reversed when Jesus says to love everybody as your neighbor and don't judge lest ye be judged and all that other stuff. These moral imperatives are reversed in the book. As a televangelist, you aren't a reflection of the Bible's morals. The Bible is reflecting your morals. And in the same vein, it seems to me that Kenneth Copeland telling us that God wanted him to punch this guy in the stomach. That kind of tells me a little bit about what Kenneth Copeland wanted to do more than anything. It seems pretty obvious to me. I mean, it's speculation, of course, but God isn't talking to Kenneth Copeland. This thought popped in his head, and he acted on it. He wanted to punch this guy in the stomach, seems to me. <laughs> Praise God. My God, he said, I'm healed. Amen. And come to find out he had all kinds of stomach problems, ulcers, everything you could think of. And he walked away healed. Mm. I did not want to do that. No, I understand. I bet. Totally. I understand. Yeah, definitely. You totally didn't. You were sacrificing for him, right, Kenneth? That's not the only weird thing that Kenneth Copeland is described doing. Now, we don't have video of that. I wish we did. But we've got some video of some other really weird stuff that Kenneth Copeland has done. While faith healing. Check this one out. This is mid-August 2021, not that long ago. Kenneth Copeland is holding a faith healing revival of some sort. I don't even know what he was doing. And then this happened. Watch. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Yeah. Comes up to a guy in a wheelchair. The guy is, you know, overtaken with this whole thing. He's like, oh, my God, Kenneth Copeland is here. This is crazy. Copeland is like giga famous, of course, and he's like nearly a billionaire. I think he's about to pass the threshold for being a billionaire. That's him going through you right now. No, that's the fact that there's a billionaire standing in front of him with a camera crew and everything. I would be nervous too. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, so this guy in a wheelchair is hoping to get healed by Kenneth Copeland. Keep watching. Glory to God. You're not bound to this chair. The day will come, you'll walk out of it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
This is truly hard to watch, but I'm sorry, guys. We have to. We have to watch it. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now then, you guys, just help him up. Dude, imagine if this guy had serious back problems. Like, when I was a kid, my dad had really bad back problems, like degenerative disc disease or something like that. He had a bunch of crushed discs and stuff. Imagine if that's what was wrong with this guy, and Kenneth Copeland just put his hand on his head and pushed. Oh, my God, dude. The cringe meter is over 9,000. Help him up. Power of God's all over him. He's not hurt. He's not hurt. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God. Praise the Lord God. God, that is cringy. That is so hard to watch. So needless to say, Kenneth Copeland has some really weird faith healing strategies, and um, they involve hitting people and pushing them over and stuff. Unfortunately, it gets weirder. Greg Stevens here, his, you remember the guy he's talking to a minute ago? I guess he wanted to one-up Copeland, so he had an even crazier story than Kenneth Copeland punching the guy in the stomach. So he lays out this whole scenario for us about this even crazier situation. Honestly, it doesn't get crazier than pushing a guy in a wheelchair over, but, you know, he tried to beat even that. So let's listen to what Greg Stevens had to say that beats even that. I had that happen to me one time. I heard the Lord tell me to do something with a ministry line in a man's church. It's not my church. It was another guy I'm preaching for in his church. And I heard the Lord say, uh, I'll heal people with eye problems right now. And so I called that out, and I don't know, a few people came down there, this one little bitty lady. And I, as I was going down to pray for people, all of a sudden I heard in my spirit spit in her eyes. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not. They'll run me out of here. And I told everybody, close your eye, head, bow, bow your head, close your eyes. Nobody looking around in this place. And I spit in my hands and laid them on her eyes. She screamed a scream. I would. Oh, my God, dude. And came up. I didn't know she was blind in an eye. Came up seeing in that eye. Praise God. I bet. I bet. Totally. Isn't it fascinating they never offer evidence for any of the healings that they perform? If they're really capable of doing this stuff, why aren't they at hospitals 24-7 healing people? Seriously. It seems like it's immoral that they're on this program talking right now instead of healing people at hospitals. All you need to do is pray over an amputee, have them regrow the limb right then and there, right in front of me, and I am instantly a believer just like that. That is what it would take. And according to them, that's something they can do, right? I mean, they should be able to. They've got God's backing. Do it. Hang on. Actually, speaking of amputees, give me a second. This is a, a, an ad running on YouTube channels. I'm not sure if it was running on mine or somebody else's or what, but I came across this the other day on YouTube. This I, mega church pastor, I guess. Dude's name is Mel Bond. And he had a, a message that would honestly convince me if he could actually prove it. Of course he can't. But listen to this, Mel Bond. This is, like I said, I think this dude is advertising. This is, this is an ad that was running on YouTube channels. If you know of somebody that's blind, they're deaf, they're crippled, they have an incurable condition, or maybe they're missing an arm or a leg or a bodily part, I want you to encourage them. Please encourage them to come to our miracle services. They take place the first Saturday of each month at 6 p.m., and then they continue that Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Well, like I said, this seems like kind of old and out of date or whatever, but this is like brand new. This was running on YouTube channels recently. Love the bolo tie though, right? That is a good fashion choice from this guy that claims to be able to heal amputees. Faith healing is the one of the lowest things that you can do to somebody, in my opinion. Convincing them that you can heal this ailment that they have, regrow limbs, give them their sight back or their hearing or whatever. It's, it's pure charlatanry. Is that a word? Pure charlatanry. And they, they seem to be reveling in this. Well, since we mentioned, uh, you know, helping people see again and 
spitting in people's eyes. There's this pastor named Michael Todd. He's really, really big on TikTok, really famous TikTok pastor. I don't know. He's got millions of uh, subbies on there, I think. He decided that he was going to do this illustration for his audience where he actually does spit in someone's face. I, I don't know why he thought it was a good idea to try to show them that this is what Jesus did. Who knows? I don't know. But he actually did it. So before we watch this, I, I'm going to tell you, I did blur it out. I didn't leave it for you guys to see, so you don't have to worry about looking away or anything. I actually have this effect in Final Cut Pro that I use where I drop a blur effect on it. I dropped like five blur effects over and over. I kept blurring it more and more because I just didn't want to see anything at all. So I think you're pretty safe. Uh, let's watch this. This is Michael Todd, late January 2022, spitting in someone's face in front of his church. Changing something and you don't see it clearly yet. But you hit. <laughs> just the noise. I'm sorry, just the noise alone is bad, and I, I'm sorry for that, but there isn't really any more noise like that. That's the worst it gets. So I blared it. Let's keep listening. And this is where most people would not face Jesus anymore. What most people would do is turn away. What I'm telling you it's just as he's physically standing here, knowing what's coming. God's saying, can you physically and spiritually and emotionally be able to stand? When getting the vision or receiving it might get nasty. I'm going to say it in a point just like that. Receiving vision from God might get nasty. You mean... God, I just bought, in crazy faith, I just bought my dream car. And now you're going to ask me to sell it back and ride in the hoopty again? Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you. Okay, I blurred it again so you guys don't have to see this. This is like five levels of blur effects. <laughs> like, it's just a big white blob at this point. You can't see anything. It might get nasty. But I left the sound in because I wanted you guys to hear how the audience reacted to it. And do you, do you hear and see the responses of the people? Yeah, that's something else, dude. Oh, my God. That is absolutely something. What was he thinking? What was going through that noggin at that moment, you, you guys think? It's how you just reacted. It's how the people in your life will react. When God is doing what it takes for the miracle, what are you saying? This man was blind. And what he was trying to do with this man is give him his DNA. What? I, I don't understand. He's trying to teach us a lesson, but did I like just not have enough information? Or, or I don't know, dude. I don't know. This pastor is actually very influential and very charismatic and good at coming up with analogies and ideas. Quit it, kitty. Uh, good at coming up with analogies and ideas to make a point uh, to his audience. And that's why he's got, I think, millions of subbies on TikTok. It's, he's very, very good. Uh, that one was obviously crossing a line. That was entirely too much. So uh, you're welcome for blurring that out. I hope I blurred enough. Even the, the audio is a little too much, but... Anyways, his audience did not like that one, so he had to come out and apologize for it. Listen to this. Late January 2022, this is just, I think, a day or two after he did that on stage, he came out with this clip, this apology to his audience. Check it out. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope you're having an amazing Monday. I just want to acknowledge uh, what happened yesterday when the spit hit the fan. I watched it back and... That's good. The spit hit the fan. I like that. I watched it back and um, it was disgusting. <laughs> like that was gross. You know, he didn't even have to go all out. He could have just like licked his finger and, you know, rubbed it on someone's face or something. Why did he have to go all out, first of all? And second of all, here's my real problem. I wish 
instead of like doing the spit in the eyes thing, I wish Jesus had made out with the guy. If he had just made out with the guy, we would be in a totally different place as a society, right? Pastors would be going out kissing dudes all over the place trying to heal them. I th it would be a better place to live, honestly, in my opinion. I think the United States would be better if pastors were making out with dudes instead of rubbing spit in their face. I want to validate everybody's feelings um, that that was a distraction to what I was really trying to do. I was really trying to make the word come alive and for people to see the story. But yesterday it got too live and I own that. And um, I just want to make sure people know that we want to help people. We want people to see Jesus. We want people to feel loved. We want people who are desperate to be able to find hope. And I'm passionate about that so much so that I try to do extreme things to help people get it. And yesterday it crossed the line. So, well, you know, I, I got to give him credit. At least he recognizes that it crossed a line. He drove over the line and just kept on going for like 20 more miles, though. I, I feel like crossing the line is a little bit of an understatement. But like I said, at least he recognizes what he did was the wrong way to do it. I love you guys. I appreciate everybody that's been praying for us and sending us messages. And to anybody who just saw that three minute clip, I really encourage you to go back and watch the whole message. There's some truth and some life in there that could potentially change your whole life. Um, when Jesus uh, spit on that man, he was blind and then he could see. Doubt it. Deeply doubt it. I'm sorry. I don't. There's no evidence of that at all. There's no evidence that Jesus performed any miracles that actually accomplished anything. There's no proof that he walked on water, no proof of any of that. But you know what? I digress. Let's keep listening. For my brother, who I love and uh, honor so much, I just called him. He was bald before I spit on him, and he's still bald today. So no miracle here. And uh, so next time I'll rethink and do something differently. Okay. Honorable. Honorable. I, honestly, I have to say I'm glad that this guy came out and apologized for it because a lot of the people that are coming out and making all these bizarre claims, like, for example, Greg Stevens or Kenneth Copeland, they're not coming out and apologizing. Kenneth Copeland actually did come out and apologize for being a Creeposaurus Rex when he laughed about Joe Biden, you know, winning the presidency, claimed that it was ridiculous and he wasn't going to believe it until blah, 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 whatever. The media said what? <laughs> the media said Joe Biden's president. And people were really upset with him over that, like his audience was. So he actually came out and apologized for that. For those that might have the idea that I hate Joe Biden, I do not. Should it be necessary, I apologize if that came across that way. But, you know, he never did apologize for pushing that guy over in a wheelchair. Glory to God, you're not bound to this chair. The day will come, you'll walk out of it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He never did apologize for supposedly punching some dude in the stomach. And the Lord said, you see that man right there? I said, yes. He said, I want you to hit him in the stomach just as hard as you can. So when he got up there in front of me, I mean, I just unloaded on him. And man, it knocked him backwards and come on. And he went, my God, he said, I'm healed. <laughs> Now we've had an opportunity to see how an audience actually reacts when you spit on somebody. With that context in mind, listen to what Greg Stevens said to Kenneth Copeland one more time. And I heard the Lord say, uh, I'll heal people with eye problems right now. And I, as I was going down to pray for people, all of a sudden I heard in my spirit spit in her eyes. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And I spit in my hands and laid them on her eyes. She screamed a scream and came up, I didn't know she was blind in an eye, came up seeing in that eye. Praise God. I, I feel it's obvious to everybody at this point that that really didn't happen. I'm pretty confident that he's completely full of spit. This is an interesting super chat. Let me get this in real fast. This is from Ivana Dragmeyer. Jesus didn't even spit on the guy in the Bible. He mixed his spit with the dirt and rubbed that on the blind man's eyes. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, I haven't even read the verse in forever. That's why I didn't even pick up on that, but... Good point. 
Adam Broughton, wasn't there a Bible story where Jesus spit in the ground and rubbed it in a guy's eye? The Bible totally portrays Jesus like a faith healer. Yeah, that's uh, fair enough. You're right. It, it kind of does. But we know faith healing is fake. At the very least, we know it's fake when anybody but Jesus does it. At, at the bare minimum, we know that. Because we have science. We can measure the effects. We can send Kenneth Copeland into a hospital to heal people and see it doesn't do anything for anybody. It doesn't help anyone but they continue to pretend that it does. Even worse, they do that leg lengthening trick. I mean, they use real trickery to fool people into thinking that they're doing something. It's disturbing stuff, seriously.